But on the phone lines, we have another Ken, but it's Ken One. Ken One Meeks, author of a best selling book right now. Also, <laughs> also, let me give my man some major props, man, because he served 21 years in the Navy, man. All right. There you go. There you go. Hey, what's That's good, Ship Mate? What's good, Ship Mate? What's up, Ship Mate? What's up? Thank you for your service, man. No problem, man. Thank you, man. Man, we really appreciate what you're doing, the hard work, the hard work that you've done, and the hard work that you're doing now, man. We really appreciate that. Thank you, man. Thank you. I take it all, man. I take it all in. Hey, man, take it all, man. Hey, you deserve that, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Give me my roses now, man. I'm telling you, man. Give me my. Hey, I tell them all the time, man. Don't, don't. Hey, man, give me what I deserve <laughs> right now. Don't wait exactly, till I'm dead and exactly. gone, man. Exactly, bro. And life is short right now. It is short, man. And all that we're going through, all the things that we're experiencing now. Come on, man. We got man. we got to embrace life right now. Got to, man. Got, got to. to. Man, so before we get into the book, where you grew up? Where you from? Let the listeners know where you from. Man, I'm from, I'm from a small city. town. In, small town in Mississippi. <laughs> called Drew, Mississippi, man, about 2,000 people. We don't have any traffic lights. We just got stop signs, so that pre pretty much puts you in a mode of where I'm from, man. It's very small. Everybody know everybody. Okay, so it's just one of those small towns. Everybody know one another. And I, if someone having a cookout, you know who that is. And oh, you exactly. Go to the <laughs> exactly. I know when I meet people in Atlanta, and they say, you know, I know people from Jew. I was like, well, if you know people from Jew, then you know me because it's that small. Oh, wow. I, I, and I dig it, man, because I'm from a small town in Florida, right? Okay, okay. And when you from a small town and someone know someone from that small town you can almost bet your bottom dollar yeah you know yeah exactly so that's that's how it is yeah. coming from those small towns man yeah it's good though it's good you learn a lot being in clothes with you know people that i call neighbors and family yeah you know it's good it's good coming from a small town hey man i want to change it for the world though oh no man all right learned a lot Let's get into this book. Let's talk about this book. This book is pretty much a bestseller right now, right? On yeah, Amazon. It is, man. Yeah, Trustworthy Eyes Can't See Everything. Um, five stars on Amazon. It's doing great. Let, great, great, great. Let me ask you a question. What made you come up with that title of that book? What inspired you? Well, well, a lot of the events that go down in the book... Um, it'll make you pretty much look at the person you're beside and question that person and say, do I really know you? Um, so I came up with trustworthy eyes can't see everything. So you have to trust what a person tells you and what you don't see because eyes don't see everything. So I put all that together, man, and it fit. It fit right in. Wow. That's what's up. Yeah. How long have you been writing? Well, I've been a writer. I've been a writer all my life. Uh, poetry, okay. you know, from writing in school, mm -hmm. you know, write to the girls. <laughs> roses, roses are red, violets are blue. blue. <laughs> yeah, man. So um, what really got me into it, um, I tell this story all the time. I was walking to like an encyclopedia, I mean, in the library, long story short, mm -hmm. and I saw the encyclopedias lined up, you know, when I was younger. And most of the people in the encyclopedia were, were Caucasian. Okay. You know, a lot of Caucasian guys who did a lot of great things. So I said, you know what? When I grew up, I want to have a African American encyclopedia telling about what the African American people did, so we can go and learn more about that. So that pushed my interest to always do that. Now I've never done it, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely going to write that uh, encyclopedia if they don't already have one for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, African Americans, man, and that's motivation, man. It's a huge motivation, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. I also read somewhere in your autobiography that this book is gonna be a TV series. Tell us about that. Speak on that. It is, man. We just did a casting call a couple of days ago. It went very well. Uh, we're putting the pilot together now. Um, I don't want to rush into it. We still have uh, more characters to pick. But so far, man, it's blooming, it's blossoming, it's great. We've got a couple of 
TV networks that's that's interested. Okay. But we, you know, we have to put everything up together to make it a whole man. But this TV series from beginning to the end is a romance drama. Okay. Um, you got a you got a guy and a girl. You know, they're pretty much going through it. He he used to be a player. He's not a player no more. He got married. His wife, but his wife. Uh, been knowing him since they was in high school. Day one. So day still, one. Huh? Day one. Day, day one. one. So she still think he got those player ways, even though they got married. You know how you can marry somebody? Yeah. But they look at you and be like, yeah, you, I know you didn't change that much. You know, you still got something in you. But the fact is, he did change. But because she thinks that he's cheating, she's doing it. Oh. Or maybe she is or maybe she isn't. I don't want to tell everything. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's crazy, man, from beginning to the end. And then his sister, um, the guy that's married, his sister, um, she's with a girl, same-sex relationship. Okay. So she's all about emotional love. Her friend is about intimacy. So they go to get counseling to male counselor. So the male counselor is not used to counseling, you know, women of same-sex, whatever. He's going to his friend and say, what should I do? So he ended up going to online dating site creating a fake profile of him as a woman. So he's talking to these different women. They think he's a female. woman, but he's actually a man. Yeah, female, oh, wow. but he's actually a man. So he's talking to these different girls. So he ended up seeing one of the girls on the site that he knew. I ain't going to tell you who it is. Ken, boy, you take me on a huge roller coaster knew. right now. Ken, I'm on a roller coaster ride. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it is. It's going <laughs> to take you all over, man. It's going to take you all. But anyway... Um, it, like I said, he ended up meeting, a, meeting one of the girls who, well, I can tell you this, because this is going to be in the trailer. He ended up meeting one of the girls who came in to counseling online. And she thinks it's a female, but it's actually him. He knows it's her. She don't know it's him. So it's crazy, man, through the whole whole series. Man, and, and man, in this project that you have right now, is in the process of being picked up, like you said before. That's a big deal, yeah. man. That's a big deal. Did you see that coming? Did you see that happening? Or, or it wasn't a goal of yours? Explain that. It wasn't. It wasn't, man. Uh, like I, uh, at the time, I was in the I was in the Navy. At the time, I'm retired now. And what I did was I just used my free time to write because this is what I like to do. And I put a lot of my friends experiences, real life experiences mm. into the book that I saw where I changed the character but I put it in the book. So when I put it in the book, other people would read it and they say, you know what? I can see this as a movie. I can visually see this because it's real life stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me put this together. Then I had other people come to me and say, I want to be a part. I want to be a, a lot of people were seeing my vision, but I didn't want everybody to be a part because you know, you want to keep your baby to yourself yeah exactly but, um, <laughs> yeah you want to do that but I realize in this world it takes a team to move forward you gotta Thank learn God. to give a little yes sir you gotta learn to give a little yeah. you gotta do that so I learned that I didn't want to be selfish and my whole goal for this project man like I said I came from nothing I came from Junior City Population 2000 okay was to take it back there so they can see that you don't have to be enclosed in where you at. You can get out. So I yes, want to sir. take it back there and develop a, a lot of jobs in Mississippi. Because, you know, it ain't no cost of living in Mississippi. There ain't no jobs in Mississippi, no. man. So that's my real goal. It's not about fame and your money is good. But the real goal is to have something you can leave behind and say you created right. this to help these people who right. didn't have hope or to even think they can you know, get to that point. Right, right. Since you segue into that, tell us about some of the actual work that you are doing in your communities. Every year, I do a gun violence awareness walk. I didn't do it this year. I canceled it. Uh, it was July 18th. I canceled it because the COVID is so bad in Mississippi right now. But I do a gun violence awareness walk every year because all of my friends, I can count on my thing, about five or six of them. They're all dead. Mm. All of them. Sorry to hear that. Yes. All of them dead. Either it's, uh, you know, drug-related or something like that. They got shot, whatever. They're all dead. So the Navy really 
Save your life. You know, save me. Yeah. Save my life, man. Yes, it did. Wow. Yeah, it saved my life. So, so I go back. I go back. You know, I live in Atlanta. So I don't okay. have to go back to Mississippi. But I go back because I see guys, you know, growing up that was just like me and girls that was growing up that was just like my sister. Yes, sir. So I wanted to help them out. So I started being in Mississippi. But what happened was I was doing this gun violence walk and I realized it was more women out there chanting, you know, no justice, no peace. And I'm like, where the men at? Where the men so, at? <laughs> What a exactly. man! What a, man, it was it was no men out there. Maybe a couple. So I said, let me form men in Mississippi. So I reached out to state representatives, lieutenant governor, judges. Now I got everybody. If you call my name in Mississippi, somebody know me because I got everybody in Mississippi. What my name on is? My team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I got everybody on the team, and and it's awesome, man. They're doing a lot of great stuff with the kids. You know, we're teaching the kids that you can be a mentor. It don't matter how old you are. Yeah, you can be a mentor. You can have a you can be a 13 year old child and have a friend in school that's being picked on and get bullied every day, and he pull him to the side and say, "Look, everything's gonna be okay." Hey, since you don't want to tell, I'm gonna go tell this teacher, I'm going to get my parents involved. But that child becomes a mentor. And a lot of people don't know that mentorship don't have an age on it. So that's why, that's another thing I try to uh, uh-huh. teach, teach the young men. Because philanthropy, and I was reading something today that said philanthropy shouldn't be done forever. You should pass the torch. Oh, yeah. It's something you should create, but then walk away from it and pass the torch to that young man or that young that young woman. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Each one teach one. There you go. Definitely. You can't do it forever anyway. Does it make sense? You, you, you got to move on. But if you teach someone how to do what you're doing and how to stand in the cab, then you, you did your job. You did your job. There you go. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. I agree a thousand percent. A thousand percent. Man, we are excited about getting that book the book I know is on Amazon, but any other outlets, is it website? Can we connect to your website? Do you have a website? What do you have to help the people find you? Of course, Amazon. You can go on Amazon and buy the book. Also, you can go to trustworthyeyes.com. It's trustworthy, E-Y-E-S, dot com. And it's a link on there where you can order, go and buy the book. And you can also follow me. Um, it's, my IG is I am K E N W U A N Ken One. I Ken am one. Ken Ken One. Ken One Meeks. M E E K S. So I am Ken One Meeks. Also on Facebook is Ken One Meeks. You can also get at me there. Are oh, we dropping it right now in, in the comment section as you speak? We dropping it right now. I have a couple fun fact questions before I let you go. Now, when going to the okay. grocery store. <laughs> What did you prefer, <laughs> okay. paper or plastic? Paper. Paper. Okay, great. Okay, what book do you prefer? You prefer electronic version of your book or hard copy? Hard copy. Okay, that's what's up. What's your favorite album, if you have one? Or what are you listening to right now? If I had to go in your CD deck or your MP3 player, what would be the song that you're listening to right now? Well, I'm old school, man, and I'm I'm old school R and B. So <laughs> if you look, <laughs> if you look into my CD deck, I'm I'm always playing that the Dream and Mariah Carey that My Love song. Okay, that's yeah, what's up. I'm always playing. I'm always playing that, but I'm also listening to some Drake and some Roddy Rich and some Lil Baby. Okay, you, know, you, get, you get a little gutter sometimes. I try sometime. to take care of that, though. <laughs> yeah, I try to take care of it. Okay, okay. Last but not least, last question but not least. Um, if you had a chance to date one celebrity, who would it be? I had a chance to meet one celebrity. If you who had a chance to date, not oh, me, date, me, date, 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 you may get in trouble, but... You know what, man? <laughs> no, no, that's cool. We gotta, we gotta understand it, man. We gotta understand it. Okay. But if I had to, have, if I had to choose somebody, man, I would have to say that I would probably get into an entanglement with Jada Pinkett. <laughs> entanglement? What else? Okay, <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
Okay, my brother, man, I hear you. I wouldn't say nothing, though. I wouldn't and, say nothing. You, hey, hey, you keep it like a G. A real G. <laughs> yeah, you know. Man, let me stop. You're going to get me in trouble. Anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Hey, man, you're a friend of the show. So anytime you want to come back, hit us up, man. Let me know. Let's work out a date. You're always welcome to come back. You are now official. You're a friend of the show. Thank you, brother. No. Thank you. I appreciate that. And also, what I'm going to do for you, man, I'm going to reach back out to you, man. I'm going to get all your information again. We're going to post your stuff. We're going to promote your stuff for a week. You know, that's what I do. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure talking with you, man. Appreciate that, man. God bless. All right. God bless you, too.